hand the meeting over to you. We're all ready to get started. Fantastic. Thank you. So this is the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. This meeting is being held by teleconference under the Governor's Executive Order N-29-20. The date is June 4th, 2021. The time is 1.11 p.m. The members of the public that are listening and would like to provide comment by telephone will be limited to two minutes unless in the discretion of the board, circumstances require longer period. Members of the public will not be permitted to yield their allotted time to other members of the public to make comments. The board's paramount responsibility is to protect the health, welfare, and safety of the public through licensure, education, and enforcement in chiropractic care. Please be aware this meeting is being audio recorded. Please turn off or silence all cell phones. We will now take the roll. Mr. Rafino, would you kindly take the roll? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Dr. McLean. Present. Dr. Perez. Dr. Perez. I'm present. Oops, I gotta get a better video. Frank Rafino here. Dr. Adams. This is uh, this is Robert Puglio. The um, Dr. Adams um, won't be attending today's meeting. Okay, thank you for that. Mr. Sweet. Yes, present. Madam Chair, we have four present and one board member excused. I believe we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Rafino. At this time, I'd like to move to agenda item number two, public comment for items that are not on the agenda. The board may not discuss or take action on any matter raised during this public comment section that is not included already on the agenda, except to decide whether or not to place the matter on the agenda for future meetings. We welcome all constructive, respectful, and professional comments from the public. Please adhere to the two minute time limit. Moderator, will you open up the public comment section? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm opening up the question and answer panel, um, also called the Q&A. We are displaying instructions for your reference. If you would like to make a comment, please type, I would like to make a comment using the field in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and submit it to all panelists. We will give you a moment to access this feature. Madam Chair, I see no request for public comment at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A panel? Uh, yes, please. Okay, it's closed. Well, actually, um, the next agenda item is future agenda items. Uh, the board may not discuss or take action on any matter raised during this public comment section that is not already included on this agenda, except to decide whether or not to place the matter on future agendas. Um, so at this time, um, moderator, will you um, open the Q&A and see if there are any future agenda items from the public? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have opened up the Q&A panel. So if any member of the public would like to make a comment, please type, I would like to make a comment and submit it to all panelists using the field in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. We'll give you a moment. All right, this is a moderator and I see no request for public comment at this time. Shall I close the Q&A panel? Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. At this time, we're gonna to move to agenda item number four. However, I wanted to remind the board members, if at all possible, to keep your video on 
while we are um, moving through the petition hearings, as well as each petitioner, please turn your video on when it's your time for your hearing. Um, if we start to have any technical difficulties, we'll make adjustments as necessary. But at this time, I'll just give a second for everybody to uh, turn their videos on so that we can see your lovely faces. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Judge Bennett, and I would like to turn the meeting over to Judge Bennett to proceed with the hearings of the petitioners um, that are listed. This is the moderator. I can uh, manually unmute the judge in case he's having trouble with that feature. So, uh, Judge Bennett, you've been unmuted. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, am I on video? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, we will all try to be very patient about this process and and hopefully uh, we want to make sure that we um, prepare an accurate record here. First of all, let me again introduce myself. Um, my name is Wilbert Bennett. I am an administrative law judge uh, with the Office of Administrative Hearings assigned to preside over this matter. And the members of the board have identified themselves for the record and it's been determined that a quorum of the board is present. Um, and at this time, um, Madam Chairman, I, I assume it's, it's the time for us to call each of these matters, each of the petition matters that are coming before the board. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, may I take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon. This is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California. Okay, and each of the petitioners present? Yes, sir. Yes, Judge. Okay, so are there, are, there are three petitioners uh, present and one is represented by counsel. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, has it been determined in which order we're going to proceed? No, that's up to you, Judge, however you'd like to proceed. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, since one of the petitioners is represented by uh, counsel, perhaps we should proceed with that one first. And that would be Ryan Hallmark. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Hallmark. Good afternoon. Uh, I know I realize you're represented by by counsel here, but um, we always instruct uh, our petitioners a, a little, give them a little bit of a sense of the of the nature of the proceeding. Um, in this proceeding, the board is concerned with hearing about any rehabilitation since your license was disciplined. Uh, the deputy attorney general will first present your petition package and provide background in this matter. After that, you will have an opportunity to make your presentation. And I would remind you that the board has had the benefit of reading the petition package and you do not have to repeat anything in that package. You will be subject to questioning by both the board members and the Deputy Attorney General. After the hearing, the board will go into closed session to deliberate. You will not receive a decision today. It will be mailed in the near future. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, sir. No questions at this point. Okay, uh, at this point then, I would turn the mat, turn the proceeding over to the Deputy Attorney General for presentation of the petition package and a case summary. Please proceed, uh, 
Mr. Deputy Attorney General. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone, uh, appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California. Uh, we are not uh, appearing uh, here today on behalf of the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, uh, but rather uh, on behalf of the people of the state of California to provide uh, the Board and Your Honor uh, with background information and whatever other information we can provide. Uh, in relation to uh, the hearing and determination of this petition. Uh, this present uh, petition uh, by Ryan Hallmark is a peti petition for reinstatement of revoked license in case number 2009-728. Petitioner uh, had license number DC25449 issued May 8th of 1998 and ordered revoked effective September 14th, 2009 following a default decision. Uh, the pleadings uh, relating to the uh, underlying dis discipline can be located uh, in the uh, petition documents at uh, what's been labeled uh, BCE pages 123 through 132. Uh, the violations leading to the revocation are self-administration of controlled substances, violation of law, regarding cold controlled substances and convictions of substantially related crimes and unprofessional conduct involving moral turpitude, dishonesty, and corruption. The underlying conduct related to petitioner's arrest and conviction uh, for possessing at his re residence 339 growing marijuana plants, approximately one pound of processed marijuana, a marijuana-based business plan, and $800 in cash proceeds from the sale of marijuana. Petitioner was convicted on October 30th, 2008, of violating a health and safety code, section 11358, a felony, unauthorized cultivation, harvesting, or processing of marijuana, and sentenced to probation for three years in order to pay fines of $570. According to the court documents submitted by petitioner's attorney in 2010, pursuant to penal code section 1203.4, the court ordered withdrawal of the felony plea and entry of a plea to misdemeanor violation of health and safety code section 11357 uh, subdivision C and ordered dismissed. Uh, also according to petitioner's documents uh, by order dated 124 2019 the court clarified that conviction that petitioner was convicted of health and safety code section 11357 subdivision C on October 30th, 2008, and not convicted of a felony, and any records indicating such should be uh, disregarded. Additionally, uh, petitioner has previously submitted a petition for reinstatement on November 5th, 2015, uh, which was de denied May 4th, 2017. That decision can be found at what's been uh, uh, labeled BCE pages 119 through 122. Uh, as for the petition uh, for reinstatement uh, of revoked license, that can be found at pages 9 uh, and 10. The, uh, there is a letter by petitioner's counsel, which can be found at pages 1 through 6 of the packet. Uh, there is a statement from a petitioner at pages 12 through 16. And there are uh, 14 letters of support uh, for a petitioner that can be found uh, at pages 18 through 35. Um, there are continuing education uh, and related certificates and information at pages 37 through 101. At 103 through page 140, at 105, we have the order for withdrawal of the felony plea and entry of plea to misdemeanor charge uh, relating to Penal Code Section 1203.4. And at page 107 and 108, there is the order to correct the record submitted by petitioner counsel uh, designating the conviction as a misdemeanor for all purposes, uh, January 24, 2019. At page 110, uh, there is a letter dated November 20th, 2017. Superior Court of California County of Santa Cruz confirming of no record of criminal convictions uh, for the petitioner. 
at uh, page 112 through 115. There is the amended Department of Justice adult subsequent action disposition information. And at pages 117 through 118, there is the California Department of Justice rap sheet uh, for petitioner amended November 12, 2019. That uh, concludes the petition and supporting documents, as well as the underlying uh, pleadings uh, prior petition for uh, reinstatement. And uh, unless there's any questions at this point, uh, that concludes the summary of the matter uh, before the court and the board. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stone. Um, what you have presented as the petition package is from just to clarify bc e 00001 that's actually five zeros and then a one up through bce 0001 Three two is that correct? I believe that's correct. Okay, um, and this is so you're presenting this as the petition package in this matter. Is that correct? In the hallmark matter? Yes. Correct. I'm just looking over my notes here. Yes, correct. Okay, counsel, are you also aware of a um, recent certificate of achievement that was uh, sent in by Mr. Hallmark? Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I, I do have that. That was uh, recently submitted, and we do have that. Um, let me... There is a further document that I have that I would like to uh, reference and submit. I believe it's a one page document. No, it's not it. Yes, it is a, uh, we have a certificate of achievement that has been submitted uh, in recognition and appreciation of five years of service uh, from the Pinkerton uh, Agency dated April 15th, uh, 2021. And that has been uh, labeled as BCE 000133, uh, which we would like to submit as well. Thank you. Okay, and that is the only other document, right? That is One the only other document I have received, correct. Okay, that will then be added as 000133 so that the petition package will be complete um, upon receipt of that document. And so that, that will be uh, duly noted, and uh, I assume that the board members have, have also received the document in question. Yes, we have. So I will proceed on that with that basis and on that un understanding. Okay, at this point, uh, is there anything further, Mr. Stone? Nothing further at this time, thank you. Okay, um, at this point, uh, I'm gonna ask if the respondent is ready to proceed with uh, his presentation. Yes, we are. Okay, and for the record, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if we've identified your counsel, perhaps we have. Could, could we also identify your counsel? 
Yes, uh, my name's Jonathan Turner, and I'm the attorney for Mr. Hallmark. And I, I did substitute in uh, in the last few weeks as his counsel because his, uh, his initial attorney, Adam Richards, was unavailable for hearing today. So just to, uh, in case there's any confusion about that. Okay, Mr. Turner, I did want your, your presence to be noted for the record. And your client is prepared to proceed at this time, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and even though you're, you're represented by counsel, we generally do want to just give you a, a kind of a brief thumbnail sketch of the, of the nature of the proceeding. Um, this is your opportunity to present your case. You may testify on your own behalf. You are reminded again that the board has had the benefit of your petition package. So there is no need to repeat anything in that package. And we have noted the receipt of that additional document that we've talked about called Pinkerton Certificate of Achievement. And I would ask if you have any additional documents you would like to present. No, we don't. Do you have any witnesses you would like to call to testify on your behalf? No. Okay. Um, so let me, at this point, swear you in as a witness. Do and please raise your right hand and uh, uh, do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that your testimony at this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, uh, please proceed uh, however you see fit. And after your presentation, uh, it will be opened up to questioning by the board and by the Deputy Attorney General. So please proceed, uh, Mr. Hallmark. Okay, and we were going to start out by, I was going to ask him a, a handful of questions, if that's okay. Oh, that's, and, <laughs> yes, okay. that's fine. Okay, and I'm going to move off screens uh, uh, so I can take my mask off and, and be six feet from him, but you'll see him the whole time, if that's okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hallmark, uh, do you take personal responsibility for uh, the offense that led to your conviction uh, back in 2008? Absolutely. And are you remorseful for your conduct in that matter? Yes, I am. Uh, can you uh, tell us how you plan or, or what you've done uh, to stay current in the profession of uh, chiropractic medicine? Oh, yes. I've um, <clears throat> just recently completed over 264 hours of continuing education. I spent uh, seven and a half years as a head trainer for uh, semi-professional football. Um, uh, that was a volunteer position. Um, and I plan to continue to uh, audit continuing ed uh, education courses as I go and begin practice again. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the areas of the uh, that the continuing education that you took uh, covered? Absolutely. Um, I found most interesting the x-ray and uh, adjusting technique. Um, was really uh, important for me to catch up on. I thought that that was very beneficial. I learned quite a bit that I didn't know before. It was taught differently back in the in student clinic, and um, and uh, just areas of diagnosis as well. It's really was beneficial for me. I felt uh, like it was very useful. And uh, can you estimate of, of those 260 plus hours of continuing education you've done? How much of that has been done in the last? few years? Well, this was all uh, since uh, 2018, and the majority of it was um, completed within the last uh, six or eight months. 
if you, uh, well, if and when you get your license reinstated, what are your plans uh, in that regard? Well, I've got uh, two different offers for um, uh, association, one near where I currently live and one near where I currently work. Um, one of these doctors uh, I've known for, I, I'd say 20 years. And um, he's uh, mentioned that he wants to be available for me if I have any questions um, and uh, is welcoming me with open arms. So I've got multiple uh, opportunities to return to practice in a, in a very uh, productive environment. And uh, since 2008, have you suffered any criminal convictions? No, I have not. And have you held any other licenses uh, since uh, your uh, chiropractic license was revoked in 2009? Well, shortly after that, I um, was able to get a, a guard uh, certification to uh, to work in the private uh, sector for uh, private and, uh, and personal security. I've been doing that since then. And uh, what is your current employment? Well, I do work for Pinkerton Investigations uh, for the last five years. Um, and that is in the uh, area of uh, executive protection. We're currently, uh, uh, we've been hired for, uh, for that purpose, executive protection uh, for, uh, underneath a Fortune 5 company. So I'm looking after three families full time. And uh, working uh, security as you have, have you been subject to background checks? Several, yes. And uh, what about, uh, are you uh, subject to random drug tests? Yes, we are. Have, have you had any write-ups or complaints uh, uh, since you've been working security since 2009? Uh, no, actually, I've been uh, recognized as going over and above my duty. And uh, your your offense uh, from 2007 uh, involved uh, marijuana. Um, do you use marijuana? No, never. When's the last time you used marijuana? Since the date of the offense. How can you assure the board uh, that you uh, will continue to obey the law should you receive your license again? Well, I have to admit that the lesson was very difficult, um, painful, humiliating. I never want to go through that again. Uh, I don't want to risk my name, my reputation, my profession or the reputation uh, of the profession. Uh, so that will never happen again. And I think my record to this point since then reflects that. Uh, why is getting your chiropractic license back uh, important to you? It's my absolutely favorite profession in the world. Uh, it's helped me uh, through some very difficult times. I've seen how well it helps other people. I believe that it is my calling. Uh, I believe I've been told I'm very good at it. And it's, um, it's, it's fulfilling, it fills my heart. This is the only thing joyful I can consider doing with the rest of my life. Okay, it, that, that's all the questions I have. Uh, will I have an opportunity to make a closing statement myself, Your Honor? Yes, at the conclusion of the uh, presentation. Okay, great. Uh, so that, that concludes our questions, or my questions. Uh, I suppose the other parties can now ask questions. Okay, does um, your client have anything additional that he wants to state at this time? Focusing on his rehabilitation, or, or, has, that, or has that been covered? He is free to do so if he, if he so chooses. I, I think between the, the question and the answer we've done and, and all the documents we've provided, I don't think there's anything additional at this time. 
Okay, before I turn this over to the Deputy Attorney General for questions, uh, I just have one clarifying question. Um, Mr. Hallmark, are you registered as a security guard with the Bureau of Security Investigative Services? Yes, Your Honor. And how long have you had that registration? Uh, it's hard to recall, but it's been many years. Okay, have you had a, a, a clean disciplinary record for, on that? Yes, sir. Okay, that's, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, I will now turn this over to the Deputy Attorney General for questions, and then that would be followed by questions from any of the board members. So, uh, Mr. Stone, please proceed. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I wanted, I had a couple of other questions about your licensure with the Bureau of Security and Investigative Services. Um, did you receive that uh, licensure after 2008? Uh, yes, sir, I believe so. And um, when was the first time you started working uh, in that field pursuant to that license? Uh, it was uh, a bit before in the um, entertainment uh, restaurant industry, uh, nightclub industry, uh, where we weren't actually required to have that at that time. Okay, so so you worked uh, as a security guard in that regard, but uh, you did not have to have uh, licensure? Oh, yes, sir, not in, not in that venue. Okay. Um, but did you have your license at the time that you were working in that venue? Um, when it was uh, required, I definitely um, uh, received my license at that time. Yes. Okay. And um, approximately when did you get that license? I'm just looking for a general time frame. Um, I, would, I would have to speculate a, uh, a bit, but it would have been um, prior to 2013. Uh, 2012 in that that range could have been a bit Definitely. before that I, I, I wish I could answer you more specifically no uh, that's all right but it would have been certainly sometime after 2010 uh, I believe so have you uh, been employed uh, as a licensed uh, security guard by anyone other than Pinkerton uh, yes um, I've worked in several different venues. Um, this would be, uh, uh, there would be quite a list, actually. Okay, are these venues, like entertainment venues? Uh, yes, sir. It, it would fall into the category of uh, nightclub, restaurant uh, categories, yes. And was this generally in the Santa Cruz area? Uh, Santa Cruz and uh, San Jose area. Uh, well, it seems uh, from reviewing uh, your statement um, that we see um, at pages uh, 9 and 10, um, or 12 through 16, I should say, it, it seems there's been um, uh, a change, a uh, significant change uh, in your life and your approach to life um, since 2008. Uh, can you tell can you tell me a little bit about um, what those changes are and and what prompted those changes? Oh, yes, sir. Um, well, I had to focus on my own rehabilitation for my low back uh, for quite a bit of that time. Um, I was also subject to a significant duration of poverty. Uh, following that, I did want to focus on my future, on my success, uh, on stabilizing my life after this um, significant upheaval. And um, and so following that, I, the most considerable change is I have been working uh, side by side with uh, law enforcement in these uh, security venues. Um, what about your uh, family, uh, friends, social uh, life uh, issues and changes 
um, have there been uh, changes uh, in that regard from your life uh, shortly before and around 2008 and your life now? Absolutely. Um, I changed my uh, residence, I, the county uh, of my residence. I changed almost everybody, uh, all my friends. Um, I've had a brand new life. I would have to say it's it is a significant change. Um, and that's a uh, thank you for that question. Sure. So you have a uh, I take it a different uh, support uh, network than uh, uh, now than you did in the 2008 time frame. Absolutely. And and can you describe your support network currently uh, a little bit for us? I'd love to. Um, at this point and for the last five years or more, um, certainly since the incident, um, uh, the only people I hang around are honest, good upstanding folks that are helpful and beneficial in my life and allow me to benefit them um, whenever I can. So I'm very proud of the people that I know now. And then if you were uh, to be reinstated, would you be willing to be reinstated on probationary terms? Absolutely. I don't have any further questions at this point. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you, Mr. Stone. Do any of the board members have questions? Oh, please identify yourself to make sure that the court reporter uh, accurately attributes whatever questions may be asked. Board members? Uh, this is Dr. Paris. I hope I'm not stepping on anyone. I have a couple questions. Please proceed. Um, so, uh, hello, Dr. Hallmark. Thank you. Oh, hello, doctor. Um, the, uh, my first question is, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your role, uh, your role as a trainer. Yes, sir. Can you tell me more about what your duties were and what you were doing and kind of the time frame there? Of course, there's about a seven, seven and a half year span uh, where seasonally I would get together and coach athletes on. Well, let me let me preface that and say I was originally recruited for the team as a defensive back coach. And uh, it didn't take me very long to realize that the, the players on those teams were uh, knew more about football than I did. <laughs> And um, and so at that period of time, they um, only had one trainer. It was kind of a student, um, you know, maybe getting some volunteer hours. And so they needed help uh, taping, stretching, uh, assessing uh, on-field injuries, and making proper referrals. And. And so your duties were, uh, was there, were there any duties that were of uh, like a more clinical nature? Uh, no, I would say that uh, it was limited to field work. Okay, thank you. I have, I have a couple of questions. So if that's okay, if, if I'll, I'll just go on. Yes, doctor. Um, and I, I know you said you were registered. You're currently registered with the Bureau of security investigative services yes that's right correct um and in application to them um were you did you disclose or were you asked to disclose uh your discipline from this board um thank you for that question i um i don't recall being asked but we do have to undergo a background ex um, check for that run our live scan fingerprints and so forth and to my understanding, they do their diligence very carefully. So you don't recall that that's having to disclose that this particular, the discipline from this board? Uh, no, I, I don't recall ever being being asked. It would it would be something I would hope they would they would find and know about. They have access to the background uh, information that the board does. And, and I would assume they likely uh, hope that you would offer it. Oh, I couldn't speculate on that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, 
can you tell me you did a lot of ce it looks like um and i i was i flipped through the packet and i can you tell me kind of how that ce uh that you've done to date has prepared you to re-enter practice and and if i'm correct you have not uh done a history physical exam medical decision making performed your duties manual therapy as a chiropractor since uh since 2009. Uh, that's correct uh, we've been the only cursory um history based on the uh, injury on the field um, and most of those i saw with my own eyes um but to answer your question and uh you are correct that i haven't had hands-on other than um, the work i did with the football team uh, in that regard, and uh, I'm looking forward very much to uh, assisting uh, one or both of the other doctors uh, in practice as I warm back up and actually build my uh, examination kit and skills back up. Um, I would not be opposed to um, uh, taking further courses. In fact, I plan to. And so I think my question was more directed to um letting you tell me how you feel the ce that you've done to date has prepared you was there a particular uh strategy or oh the strategy as far as the uh the coursework that i did i i followed the the board's exact requirements for um ethics and law uh for examination and adjusting skills um and the uh unassigned courses the uh um that you're allowed um i tended to uh take x-ray or neurology or anything that i could that would deepen my knowledge and and uh, serve a really good refresher uh for me and i found them i found them very helpful and how how many were how many of those courses were um, the same? How many times did you repeat the, some of those courses? Oh, many, many of them were the same. Um, I found that to be actually more beneficial to me because of the repetition. And so you saw that as benefit. What I when I flipped through and I was I could only go through briefly, but. I noticed, uh, like some of the courses were repeated within a week. Yes. Um, on 1024 and 1031, it, it appears uh, to be the same ethics course. The 1122 and 123 courses appear to be the wellness. They were titled mm -hmm. wellness in the office, and then it appears the same technique course uh, was done on November 5th and November 15th. Does that sound about right? Oh, yes. And in, in some of those um, cases, the instructors were the same and some of them, the instructors were different. It just depends on the course and the timing. And I was uh, subject to their uh, to their schedule of courses and um, their availability to um, to attend and, and also my availability to attend. So you saw that as beneficial versus obtaining um, a more broad education perspective. I'm, my concern here is that you haven't done uh, the duties, performed the duties of a, of a licensed chiropractor or seen patients or put your hands on patients in, uh, you know, for a long time. And it, it appears to me that it becomes very narrow. Um, I think the, the wellness course, I, I think I counted six maybe times. Does that sound correct? It very well could be, Doctor. So your your contention is that that was beneficial to take that course six times? Uh, yeah, I found it um, very useful. And uh, that's my, my honest answer. I got something new out of it every time. I have no, no more questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. Any further? I'm sorry, I'm, please proceed. I'm sorry, um, Your Honor. I have questions. This is Dr. McLean. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Hallmark. Good afternoon, Doctor. Um, so I'd like to just ask a few more questions along the line of Dr. Paris here. Um, 
all of you, you, your testimony was that you've done over 200 hours of um, continuing education. Uh, it appears to me that all, all of those hours were done by this one company. Is that correct? Under this one company, uh, back to chiropractic. Yes, that's correct. And all of those um, were, as Dr. Parrish pointed out, pretty repetitive in nature. Um, my question here is, and all of those were also distance learning, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Mr. Hallmark? Uh, yes, okay. doctor, that's, that's and correct. And so um, prior to, of course, the pinch, okay. Prior to the pandemic, of course, um, did you do any in-person uh, continuing education? Oh, prior to the pandemic, yes, I believe um, I'd done uh, one or one or two years worth of uh, of continuing education, um, and I'll. It, it was only recently, um, in in the last year, that I was. Um, it was made clear to me of what the requirements were set forth by the board. Um, and, um, and in addition, I, I've also taken in person uh, uh, tactical medicine uh, certification courses that's uh, hands on um, emergency care, also um, at the CPR and so forth. Okay, and how, how is that tactical? Um, course helpful in your would would it be helpful in your daily practice as a chiropractor how's that beneficial well, this was focusing on stabilizing uh a patient or a, a victim for transportation okay uh, and so sorry and so just uh just for clarification um can you give me an example i'm, I'm looking at uh some of the documents here on your continuing education. And it seems that you uh, have taken the same adjustive technique and ethics uh, courses repeatedly by the same instructors even. Um, can you give me an example of what you learned, what you would have, what different you would have learned from one course to the other and uh, given that these courses were one uh, was one week apart one was a couple of months later what what are some examples of, of things that you learned that you felt were beneficial that you didn't get the first one or two three or four times that you took the course i believe the differences came up with the uh with different questions and the different students um attending the, the meetings. As the questions change, the demonstration would change as well. Um, so each course was a bit different, even though it had a, a very similar curriculum. Um, and uh, so we would have a different, uh, we described a different line of drive, uh, different stabilization, um, and the course actually developed over time um, in its, uh, uh, camera view, camera angles, uh, interaction uh, with the uh, uh, with the instructor, and so. And so uh, what? Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh no, that, that's okay. Um, please go ahead. And so, what would you have gleaned differently in an, uh, the multiple ethics in law courses? Because those are not uh, uh, really those are not dependent upon uh, different positionings and technique. Well, ethics and law, I'd say I would get a little bit uh, more out of each course as well. And driving the point uh, further home, uh, there are various points further home. And the biggest one to me was if it's a gray area, stay away. And that's that's what I got out of it. And that's what I needed to get out of it. And so let me just switch um, uh, my questions a little bit. Uh, you spoke earlier or you testified here earlier that you were the head athletic trainer for the semi pro fo football team. Yes. Correct. As the head athletic trainer, did you receive any athletic training certifications or licensure? 
Oh, no, that wasn't required of me. Okay. You are aware that there is a certification for athletic trainers. I believe there's uh, courses and certifications that you can get. And um, I believe that I was uh, uh, qualified for, for the work and the coach agreed. So you said that you worked um, more than seven and a half years in that capacity um, at, because they only had one trainer. Were you responsible for overseeing that other trainer? Um, you mentioned that you thought they were a student. Um, were you responsible for overseeing that individual um, as the head not, athletic trainer? Not necessarily. Um, I would, uh, we worked fairly independently. Uh, this person, I have to admit, is, was a lot better at taping ankles than I was. Um, but as far as uh, being kind of calm and cool under, under pressure and uh, at the times that uh, there were injuries coming off the field, I would take, take lead. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my experience, uh, an athletic trainer pretty much is the individual in control of all injuries that occur during a game or a practice, um, as, as well as uh, the person that is responsible for treatment plans, um, emergent care, et cetera, and referrals, et cetera. Is that correct? Uh, that was part of my duty, but not with treatment plans and um, um, referrals were made as a suggestion. Those were deferred mostly to the coach uh, who retained that uh, privilege. Okay, so as the athletic trainer who is in charge of uh, the team's injuries, you relegated that. That was your relegated to the coach to make that determination. Is that what you're saying? Well, the, the coach um, had his relationships with orthopedic surgeons and uh, it was his, uh, uh, his responsibility to maintain uh, EMS uh, availability on the field as well. So he would make those calls. Um, but was it your decision who needed to be referred when? Did you communicate that to the coach or the coach just dictated all treatment? I would, I would render my opinion to the coach, certainly. And then he would make the determination if the player needed to stay where he was on the bench or if he needed to, uh, uh, to be transported. And so uh, as an athletic trainer, it's a lot more than taping ankles. It is um, evaluating uh, assessing injuries, evaluating injuries, and um, oftentimes if there is some type of treatment that needs to be done right there on the field or on the sideline, implementing that. Did you do those things? Uh, assessing uh, assessment to a point, um, if they were weight bearing, uh, if they could bear their own weight, I would help them off the field. Um, sometimes it'd take more, more than one of us. Um, Directing them as a suggestion for uh, uh, for outside care was definitely something that I was able to do, but these players had their own own doctors and um, their own healthcare uh, support. Um, we're talking about adults, you know, adult sports and versus uh, minors. Certainly, I'm aware of that. Um, okay, I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Any other questions by board members? Okay, any, um, actually there, there's a clarifying question, uh, Mr. Um, Palmer. I, correct me if, if, if this has been covered, but I may have missed it. Uh, I understand your statement that um, your licensure and registration as a security car guard, you don't remember whether you were asked to disclose discipline from the chiropractic board. Do you remember 
when you applied for that registration, what they asked about convictions, prior convictions? Uh, no, Your Honor, I don't. You don't remember that? No, sir. Okay. When you made the application for that registration, had you been convicted of this crime that is at issue? Uh, I believe so. But you don't remember if you were asked about convictions on that application? I do not. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, sir. Okay, any further questions from any, any of the uh, parties here? Deputy Attorney General, any other questions at all? It does not able to, appear oh, that. The, I'm sorry. Oh, you're on. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Turner. Am I able to ask a, a couple of follow up questions? Yes, you may. Okay, if I could. Um, Mr. Hallmark, if the if the board as sort of uh, wanted to place you on probation, and as part of that probation, you had to take some additional coursework. Uh, would you be willing to do that? Of course. Uh, regarding the continuing education, did you try to follow the the board's requirements uh, regarding uh, the number of hours required? Uh, to the letter, yes. And do those requirements include taking uh, courses in, in various areas of the profession? Uh, not according to the enforcement analyst there was I was in uh, communication with. Okay. Did, uh, regarding the, uh, the your work uh, helping this semi-pro football team, uh, did you ever mislead anybody uh, such as the coach about your your credentials? Oh, no, sir. In fact, um, the players referred to me as coach. And were you paid uh, for that? No, this is strictly volunteer. All right. I, I have no further questions. Okay. Any further questions from any source? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone. I, I did have a uh, question that I would like to follow up with. Please proceed. Um, thank you. I just wanted to um, uh, hear what you have to say a, a little bit about, uh, it's, it seems that uh, there's been a change in your sort of how you approach or uh, analyze uh, cannabis or marijuana from 2008 uh, to now. And uh, Certainly, the the law and society has gone through a number of changes uh, regarding um, the legalization and use of uh, cannabis uh, during that time frame. And uh, I understand that, uh, that that you have a that, that you have a different approach and thought process to uh, the use of cannabis uh, from the 2008 to the current time frame. Can uh, other other than the uh, fact that you had the criminal issues in 2008. Um, have you had, uh, is there anything else that caused you to change your analysis or approach or thought process regarding um, uh, the use of cannabis uh, during this time frame? Well, I would say so. Um, my opinion of it, it's on one hand, it's so rampant and so abused at this point. I mean, it's, uh, I, I understand it to be legal recreationally, which is absurd to me. Um, I saw it only as a, a medicinal um, application before, and I don't currently believe that it should be for that either. I think there's a lot more research that needs to be done. I think it's, I think it's a disgusting lifestyle for one. I don't like pulling up to a, uh, intersections anywhere in in the city and smelling it it's um only a bad memory for me but i think it's extremely unhealthy and abused thank you that was my question thank you okay nothing no further questions correct 
Okay. Uh, okay. At, at this point, then, uh, I would ask for any um, closing statements from either of the parties. And um, um, Mr. Turner, since the uh, burden is on your client, uh, I would request that you be allowed to go first on this. Okay. Uh Thank you, and sorry you can't see my face, but I, I'm here. Um, in, in any event, uh, I first just wanted to point out, and, and again, hopefully you'll take a look at the letter that was provided by uh, Mr. Hallmark's initial attorney, Adam Richards, which is pages one through six, I believe, of the uh, hearing packet. Um, but uh, number one, I just wanted to point out the status of the criminal case because it's a bit confusing and i guess that's because as mr stone pointed out sort of attitudes have changed regarding marijuana under the law um and, and so the laws have changed quite a bit but the bottom line is he, he was revoked as you're aware in 2009 for a what was then a felony marijuana uh conviction um that felony uh, basically possessing or growing marijuana over six plants um, has become a, a misdemeanor in California. And he was specifically, as the court's uh, subsequent documents that you have pointed out, uh, has been convicted of Health and Safety Code Section 11357, subsection C, um, which is basically uh, possession of marijuana above an ounce. Um, and, and that's important because that misdemeanor uh, offense under California law, and it's there's several health and safety code sections, 11360, 11361.5, and 11367.1 and all address this. But now marijuana possession, even the criminal level of it, um, the records of it are to be destroyed after two years, which is why I presume the Sacramento or the Santa Cruz court no longer has any record uh, of an offense. Um, they're to be destroyed. And, and what the law says again under 11367.1 is, is that uh, that marijuana possession offense after two years, and, and we've been, we're talking, you know, 12 years at this point or 13 years, um, is not to be used to deny Mr. Hallmark any sort of benefit, including denying him a license. So there's certainly the argument that this offense uh, can even be used to deny him uh, this license. So I just wanted to uh, clarify that uh, because it is confusing, but I think that the paperwork you have before you from the court bears all of this out. Um, uh, secondly, the conviction at issue, which again, I would argue is no longer a conviction, but uh, I, I guess the, the criminal conduct at the time is, is very remote in time. It was from 2007 uh, with a 2008 conviction date. Um, you know, it, it, even at the time, it was not a, it was a victimless crime. Um, uh, as far as I think that one of the key factors for the board is, is, you know, will this conduct repeat uh, should uh, Dr. Hallmark receive his license again? And I think it's very clear he won't engage in any sort of activity like this again or any illegal activity. Um, you know that because he's remorseful for what occurred. It, hap it happened so many years ago and he hasn't had any convictions or or issues since then uh he's been gainfully employed in the security uh industry um he's has a security card through the bsis um and i'd point out uh as uh, this hearing was going on i looked at the application for a security guard with the bsis online there are no questions about criminal history or a disciplinary history on the application, at least as it exists today. Um, however, you do have to subject yourself to a live scan as part of that process. 
and I know he did that. And so a live scan would show, of course, any criminal convictions, and I believe they show discipline history as well. So uh, just for your edification. But uh, again, he's been uh, basically employed, uh, you know, with the scrutiny uh, of a security guard for many years. He's had no problems. In fact, he's really excelled in that world. Um, as he stated, the consequences related to his offense many years ago were devastating. He certainly never wants to be in this position again. Um, and, you know, he, he certainly doesn't use marijuana, doesn't think uh, highly of it at all, as he's made it clear. You also have all the character letters on his behalf, at least 14. And these are all people attesting to his good character. I think that's very important. And then lastly, I wanted to point out, you know, he's done, like he said, about 264 hours of uh, continuing education. Um, that's since 2018. Most of it, it appears, has been in the past two years. Um, it's been in various areas uh, of continuing education. Um, and, uh, you know, it was pointed out that he, uh, some of the courses, he took some of the same courses, but as he pointed out, um, you know, there, there's no harm in that, in that, you, number one, it, it may hit home a little bit better a second time. And more importantly, each course is a little different because they're interactive courses is, uh, from what I can tell, you're going to get different questions and different answers each course, uh, because obviously every course can't cover all of the things within this subject matter, it would be impossible. Um, you know, take days and days, I imagine. So um, so to his credit, again, he's taken 264 hours. Um, that's what the board wanted of him, I believe. They wanted him to take a specific amount of hours, and, and, and he more than did that. And then lastly, should you have any additional concerns about him, uh, you know, and, and needing more education, he can always be placed on probation. He indicated that he'd be happy to comply with any terms of probation. And I believe the board as part of probation can certainly include any types of education courses and he's happy to take those as well. Um, but uh, again, he was a chiropractor for, I believe about 11 years without any patient issues or practice concerns before the, the revocation. Uh, so it, it's our sincere hope that uh, you will reinstate his license. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Schroeder. Uh, Mr. Stone, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, the Attorney General's Office does not have a, a position or argument regarding uh, reinstatement. However, I would note uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the first of which is I, I did look at the Department of Consumer Affairs website uh, concerning petitioner's security guard license. And we do have uh, his uh, Bureau of Security and Investigative Services license. Uh, he has license number 1831427. It was issued July 25th. 2013 and uh, its expiration date is July 31st, 2023. Um, I have also reviewed the current application available on the Bureau of Security and Investigative Services website and uh, it does generally uh, comport to the representations uh, by Mr. Turner regarding um, what it asked for and, 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 and how it works, uh, at least currently. And um, Finally, uh, I would note that uh, as the underlying matter preceded by default proceedings, there are no costs uh, that were assessed or that are due uh, prior to any reinstatement. And uh, that concludes the information that I have to provide uh, to your honor and the board. Thank you. Okay, it, it appears that there's uh, nothing further um, in this matter then. Uh, before we, uh, well that, first of all, um, that concludes the petition hearing in this matter. The case is submitted and the record is closed. Uh, before we go off the record, I do want to 
uh, request the court reporter if she could provide an estimate of the number of pages and the ending time of the hearing in case one of the parties may wish to request uh, a transcript. Madam Court Reporter, can you provide that information? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I see the current time as 2.20 p.m. Um, page count is 44, 44. Mm -hmm. And my CSR number is 9891. And what's your name again for the record? First name is Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N. Last name is our A-U-E-R. Okay, thank you very much. A, re a request form uh, shall be made available to the parties in due course, should either of the parties request a hearing transcript. So I wanted to make that clear for, for the record. And Judge, we are, uh, do we have yes. another matter? Um, we're not, I, I will still be here. Am I right that we have another, you have another matter to hear as it relates? Yes, we have two more matters to hear. Okay, so I'll still be here, yes. Oh, that is correct. Yeah, please, please don't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. And the, uh, I, okay, so again, let's just wrap this one up. We are off the record in this matter and we'll, proceed to the next petition, but I have to ask the board members how they wish to proceed, whether they wish to meet an executive session to discuss this matter, or whether they want to reserve reserve it to the very end of the day. Your Honor, we typically reserve it to the end of the day and go in closed session for all the matters at the same time. That's what I thought, but I wanted you to confirm that. Thank you very much. So we, are we ready then to proceed with the next matter or should we take a break? A 10 minute break? I'm not sure how people feel about it. Or do you wish to proceed? Is there a consensus? This is Deputy, ah. this is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone. Um, we can either proceed now or after a break. Uh, either way uh, is fine. Regard to uh, me. Okay, what's the preference of the board members? I would can we go ahead and hear the next case and we'll take a break after that one we'll that would be fine i just wanted to see how, how people felt about it yes we will proceed with the next case um and the next case will be the next petition for reinstatement the, the other one the last one i think is a petition for reduction of penalty so the uh, the next matter The next matter will be the petition for reinstatement of Dean Hankins, H-A-N-K-I-N-S. And is Mr. Hankins present and available? Mr. Hankins, you're there. Uh, you are not represented by counsel, correct? Did you? Can you, can you uh, activate your mute button? Are you there, Mr. Hankins? Mr. Hankins? I see you, but I can't hear you. Do you see a mute button, unmute button? Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes, Your Honor. There appears to be a technical issue. I can see Mr. Mr. Hankins, but I can't hear them. I can't hear him. Mr. Hankins, are you there? Well, I'm wondering if we should proceed with the next one and try to resolve Mr. Hankins' technical matter, technical difficulties later in the afternoon. Um, um, will the moderator um, 
assist Mr. Hankins and we can move on to the other one? That's what I was. The other case. Okay, Mr. Hankins is leaving a note up, says, I hear you, but apparently he can't see me. Or we can't hear him. Okay, this is the so, moderator. Um, okay. It sounds like uh, Mr. Hankins needs to click on the drop down arrow near his micro microphone uh, icon, and he needs to change his input output. So if he clicks on his mic, the down arrow next to his microphone, icon where he mutes and unmutes himself, there are options to work on his input output and that should enable him to hear us. But if that doesn't work, he also has an option to call in for his audio and he can do that by clicking on audio and video at the top of his screen and selecting the call in option. And we are displaying a slide to help him with that. Okay. Madam moderator, are you still there? Yes, I am. I wonder if it would be more expeditious to proceed with the next one and come back to this later after those difficulties are resolved. I I'm think that's a good suggestion. Okay, why don't we proceed with the next one and maybe you can somehow off the record or, or somehow alert Mr. Hankins what he needs to do. So we'll proceed with the, the next one then. Okay, we're back. We're going to take up the um, the next matter. And that will be the petition for early termination of probation of Mr. Cortez. Mr. Cortez, are you there? Good afternoon, board members. Thank you for hearing me. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me just indicate to you, and I, I um, want to make sure that you, you're not represented by counsel. No, sir. Okay, and uh, for the record, again, uh, may I take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone appearing for the uh, Office of the Attorney General on behalf of the people of the state of California. Thank you. The petitioner Jude Cortez, C-O-R-T-E-S, is present and is representing himself. And um, Mr. Cortez, I don't know how much of this, uh, the previous matter, you may have heard at least initially, but I just want to make certainly make certain that you're aware of certain things and that is that in this proceeding the board is concerned with hearing about any rehabilitation since your license was disciplined the deputy attorney general will first present your present your petition package and provide background in this matter and after that you will have an opportunity to make your presentation as a reminder the board has had the benefit of reading the petition package and you do not have to repeat anything in that package. You will be subject to questioning by both the board members and the deputy attorney general. After the hearing, the board will go into closed session to deliberate. You will not receive a decision today. It will be mailed in the near future. Do you have any questions? No, sir, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will proceed and I would ask the uh, Deputy Attorney General to present the petition package. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, again, the Office of the Attorney General uh, is here representing the people of the state of California and not uh, as the attorney or advocate uh, for the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, but uh, appears here to provide uh, information to your honor and to the board in order to evaluate and make a determination regarding this petition. Uh, this petition uh, is case number 2018-1203.
<clears throat> and uh, the petition uh, seeks a, a reduction in penalty, uh, specifically at uh, pages two and three, uh, you will find the petition. And it specifically uh, uh, relates um, to uh, the elimination of the observed random drug and alcohol testing. Uh, petitioner states there is no need for that condition uh, of his uh, probation based on his proven abstinence over the past two years and pandemic related uh, contact issues. You will also find uh, prior to the uh, petition, the enforcement analyst probation report at what's been labeled DCE uh, page one. Uh, as I said before, pages two and three, you will find uh, the petition and uh, the supporting documents uh, uh, supplied, by petition, supplied by petitioner can be found at pages four through 24. Um, in that regard, uh, we have the uh, letter from a uh, petitioner uh, addressing uh, the circumstances, pages four and five. We have a continuing legal education submitted by a petitioner at pages six through 10. It's a document regarding the completion of an 18 month alcohol program at page 11. There um, are two successful, successfully completed examinations by registered and uh, licensed addiction specialists at pages uh, 12 through 14. A, a Mothers Against Dr Drunk Driving a class a documentation at page 15, and a um, document uh, relating to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, completion of 75 uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Um, as I said, the supporting documents are at pages 6 through 24. Uh, these also include seven letters of support from family, friends, patients, and colleagues at pages 17 through uh, 23. Uh, petitioner was uh, initially issued his license number DC 28938, September 23rd, 2003, uh, which is set to expire January 31st of 2022. There, uh, the underlying a discipline uh, in this matter uh, is that effective May 2nd, 2019, petitioner was placed on five years probation with standard terms and to abstain from drugs and alcohol, drug and alcohol testing, community service, compliance with criminal probation and reimbursement of board costs in the amount of $2,087.50. Petitioner is in compliance with his probationary terms and has paid uh, the board costs. The petition and, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, decision and order uh, by stipulation and the underlying accusation can be found at pages 25 uh, through 41. That underlying accusation and stipulated settlement uh, relates to causes for discipline for endangering the health, welfare, and safety of the public, unprofessional conduct, dangerous use of alcohol, convictions of substantially related crimes, and multiple convictions involving alcohol. More specifically, a petitioner was convicted on July 12, 2018, of driving under the influence of alcohol. The offense took place February 21st, 2018, when petitioner was in a traffic accident and was in, 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 administered a preliminary alcohol screening test registering a 0.23 and 0.29 blood alcohol concentration. And a later breath test was performed at booking and processing, registering a result of 0.19% blood alcohol concentration. He also has a prior conviction for DUI dated June 10th, 2013, for an offense that occurred March 16th of 2013. On that date, a DUI checkpoint a preliminary alcohol screening test indicated a blood alcohol concentration of 0.1 for 0.5% or 0.15% uh, with a later breath test at booking and processing at 0.12%. Uh, that is the uh, background uh, of the uh, discipline 
and the current status of petitioners probation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stone. Um, the Deputy Attorney General has presented the petition summary, and it is now time for you to present your case. And uh, since you're not represented by counsel, let me review for you a little bit about your role in this in this matter. Um, first of all, this is your opportunity to present your case. You may testify on your own behalf. Uh, you are reminded that the board has had the benefit of your petition package. So there is no need to repeat anything in that package. Um, I would also uh, indicate uh, to you that uh, if you have any additional, I, I would ask you rather, if you have any additional documents you would like to present. Uh, Judge, the only thing I would like to present is since uh, I applied for the petition, I was randomly tested again two times and both were also negative. Um, and those documents I can uh, definitely get for the board or uh, we can just check with FSS solutions because those um, those results should have been, I guess, emailed or uh, sent to Miss Bell, who is my enforcement analysis. But those were the only, those would be the only documents or the only information I would like to add. Okay. Uh, do you wish to submit those? Um, I could. I, I don't know how to submit that right now, but I know that, like I was saying, Miss Bell, my enforcement analysis, she probably has that information. It's just when I received this packet here, I was. Um, called for two more random observed testing, and I uh, was negative on both of those. Okay, two negative random testings. When did this? When did they take place? Uh, one was. Let me check the exact date, sir. May 26, 2021, and May 13, 2021. Okay, why don't we take those under the bands for right for the time being. Uh, do, you, do you have any uh, witnesses that you'd like to call? No, sir. No judge. Okay. Um, let me swear you in as a witness at this point. Yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that your testimony in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Do. Please proceed however you see fit in this matter, remembering that the focus of this proceeding is on your rehabilitation and your fitness uh, to have the conditions removed that you are seeking. So please, please proceed with that Thank understanding. You, Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, board members. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to my petition. Um, I am, I've been a chiropractor now for 17 years practicing in my own clinic and I accept full responsibility of the mistakes that I have made in the past with the use of alcohol. I have been um, embarrassed and ashamed. I've put my family through um, an unbelievable amount of hardship um, and that's uh, compensation and also um, just a embarrassment of my family name. And so I'm very, very sorry for that. There's not a day that goes by that I don't look at my two boys and my wife I'm very, very sorry for what I have done, what mistakes and the decisions that I have made in the past. And I will, because of those decisions, because I've hurt my family and because I put my clinic and my practice in jeopardy that, I, that means so much to me, 
I have abstained from alcohol and will continue to abstain from alcohol um, because I don't want these to ever uh, affect my life again, affect my family or affect my practice. Um, again, I've, I've uh, turned in my petition and, and have uh, showed that I followed all the board orders and all the court orders. Um, the 48 hours that I was in jail was the most, it was the scariest and again, the most embarrassing and most shameful time in my life. Um, and I, there's no way I ever want to go through that again. Um, and so that's why I'm going to abstain from alcohol. That's why I will continue to just serve my family and try to build up my family name um, back to, um, if you allow me to, back to where I can redeem myself with my family and my sons. Um, I'm continuing to do the um, continuing education, of course. Um, I'm also continuing to do a lot of the community service, which involves a lot of the youth programs. Um, um, I'm, I've gone above and beyond also just being proactive right away, just knowing that I made a mistake. So I, I myself seek, I sought out the, uh, the couple of uh, addiction, the licensed addiction therapist, so they can analyze me and, and make sure that I am ready to um, take this on and never go back again. Um, I want to be able to prevent this from ever happening by abstaining. And for me, that is the best way to never get into this problem again, or never have this problem again. I have two sons, I've educated them. One is 17, one's 15. I've educated both of them and showed how uh, irresponsible it was for their father. And I want to be a I want to be the best role model for my both my two sons and be the best husband I can for my wife. Um, I will not deviate. That. that is my primary goal, as is keeping my practice and providing the best chiropractic care for my patients. Um, so I I plead with you um, that I could get this petition, uh, the reduction of penalty, um, just because this is also another two years of embarrassing getting a test while someone is observing you. I mean, the first few sessions, I couldn't even, it was so difficult to provide the test because I was I was so nervous and anxious. Um, and added to that is also the monetary um, fee for, for the testing. It has really been a hardship for me since I've been on probation. Um, the insurances that I'm the provider with have dropped me, so my patient load and therefore my um, salary has been reduced. And being the primary and sole provider for my family has um, has ex we've experienced so much hardship. And so I would like for this penalty to be reduced, so I can actually gain a little bit of that monitor back. I have one son going to college. I have another one in high school. So. Raising two boys, especially one going to college, is, is going to take um, all I can. I just want to concentrate on work, providing the best care, chiropractically possibly get back into with those insurance companies so I can see more patients. And um, I want to leave this all behind me and be able to redeem myself. So um, I, I'm pleading that you will uh, reduce this penalty so I can, um, I can take that next step forward. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Cortez, just by way of clarification. Yes, sir. Uh, you are specifically petitioning to have the alcohol testing requirement deleted from your probation? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking for the whole probation to be um, excused, just the reduction of that penalty, sir. And that is all you're requesting? Just the yes, reduction sir. of that specific of the testing requirement. Yes, correct? Judge, that's correct. Okay, and and I think that we we did. I just wanted to clarify that, and maybe the board members might have some questions about that later. I just wanted to make make sure we had that on the record. Okay, Absolutely. Mr. Stone, do you have any questions at this time? Yes, De thank you, Deputy. Oh, thank you, Deputy. Okay, please proceed. I, I, I'd like to begin with some questions regarding the um, your Alcoholics Anonymous um, involvement. Uh, do you have a sobriety date? Um, actually, I've 
I've never felt that I was uh, had an addiction to it, so I don't have the sobriety date. I was um, actually when it happened, I was proactively. I went to Alcoholics Anonymous because I already knew from my first conviction that I was going to have to um, go to AA to to meet the uh, the criteria of the courts. So I proactively started going just to get myself, you know, into the mode where, you know, I, I'm going to abstain. This is enough is enough. This mistake again. So I don't have a sobriety dates or no. Uh, did you uh, work any of the steps? Yes, I did. I worked steps. I worked the steps um, by going to the AA, by actually going to my family members, going to my friends who um, that have were disappointed because I went through these convictions and I apologize to them. Uh, did did you uh, work the twelve steps all the way through twelve? No, sir. Uh, how far did you get? You know, I'm not I'm not even sure about each step, sir. I don't I don't have that nice. Okay, well. Um, was there a step uh, that you did participate in that you found to be uh, the most impactful on you or the most rewarding? The most impactful and rewarding was when I had to talk to my sons and educate them about what they're wrong and apologize to them for putting the family in this type of turmoil. Um, what about a step that you found um, most difficult, oh, challenging. It was, it was actually the same. It was actually the same step, sir, because you know my two boys have always looked up to me as a role model, and admitting to them that I was convicted of a, a crime and I had to go to jail and I had to do community service and then I had to serve all these penalties um, for this mistake, this action that I made was very difficult for me to to talk with them. I mean, we were, we were all in tears. Was there uh, something in particular uh, or even just generally that uh, was going on uh, in your life in the 2013 to 2018 timeframe uh, that led you ha to have these difficulties uh, with alcohol and the uh, issues with driving under the influence? Um, back in 2018, I actually had, uh, I had a partner, a business partner. We were together for about 14 years and he went to Arizona and, uh, you know, bought a, a pre-existing clinic. Um, so I know that I was going to be alone here and, and run the clinic by myself, which I was happy to do. But um, while I was here on my own, um, my two boys who are very active in sports, I was driving, I was taking them to cross practice and we were going down the stairs of my house and I slipped down the stairs and broke two ribs on the left side. And when I broke those two ribs on the left side without a partner, I was kind of stressed out looking for someone who could substitute so my, my practice could continue running. Um, you know, and, and with those ribs out and with the inability to take my kids to their practices, I was very stressed. I was able to find a good friend of mine that I went to school with, and he subbed for me for about two weeks. My doctor told me I couldn't go back for six weeks. Um, a friend of mine was able to sub for me for two weeks, and after the two weeks that he was able to sub for me, I was so happy that we celebrated that day, and that was the day that I made the fatal mistake, or the bad mistake, of getting back into my car and driving home. I should have Ubered, it was, it was a horrible, horrible decision, um, but it was those, those events that led to my, my DOI in 2018. How about the circumstances uh, regarding the DUI in 2013? In 2013, I have an identical twin brother. My identical twin brother and his wife were over at the house. We were having barbecue and we were having a few drinks. We were having some Corona, some beers. Um, at that time, my brother used to smoke cigarettes, and so when he ran out of cigarettes, he said, I need to get some cigarettes. Let's go around to the liquor store and get some cigarettes. Of course, he's from L.A., 
and he was at my house. So I said, okay, get in the car. I'll go ahead and drive to go get you a pack of cigarettes. And that's when we hit the checkpoint. Again, stupid decision. Um, should have just told him, no, no cigarettes for you. Or if you want some, go ahead and Uber to go get cigarettes. Now, after the initial 2013 uh, conviction, uh, obviously you still had some struggles uh, that led to the 2018 uh, conviction. After um, after your arrest in, in, in 2018, um, yeah, what changed for you that uh, that enabled you to um, basically stop drinking uh, at that point uh, of time, uh, as opposed to at the prior DUI? Uh, it was it was a big wake up call, and I was just scared to death with the. I think it was the the penalties that I had to serve that on the second DUI, just woke me up, scared me to death because I actually had to go and serve forty eight hours in jail. Um, the, the, for me, that, that did it right there. That scared the heck out of me. Um, the fact that it happened again, I was embarrassed again, and I was, you know, very, very disappointed in myself. Um, the fact that the cost of it, the, the amount of time I had to um, uh, go to the DUI, everything was just overwhelming, and just um, the severity, I think, woke me up, honestly, sir. Have you not had any alcohol since the arrest in 2018? No, sir. I have abstained. Is there anything um, different now with your uh, coping mechanisms or support networks um, uh, since 2018 that have been different for you uh, than uh, prior to 2018? Since 2018, the close friends and the family members that I have who do partake in casual drinking they completely support me. There's no peer pressure. I have the best support group at home. My wife is an amazing woman. My kids are amazing kids. I have the best life. I don't want to. I don't want to sacrifice that. And I have just. It's a big eye opener for me that I am not going to put my family, and my business, and my my blessings in jeopardy again. Thank you. I don't have anything further at this time. Thank you, sir. Okay, do the board members have questions? This is Dr. Paris. I, um, Good afternoon, Dr. Paris. Hi, Dr. Cortez. Thank How you. How are you for doing, that. sir? Um, first, I, I want to say, I, um, you know, it's not often we get a, a, a letter, a reference letter, uh, supportive as, as your wife's. And it's not often we see them from the people who know us best when um, in doing this. So uh, I was really I really appreciated reading some of those. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about um, your the costs that you bear um, to test. Can you give us? Um, actually, I could pull it up on my phone for the exact cost, but I know with FSS solutions. Uh, uh, FSS Solutions, I believe I have to pay uh, 160 a month, and then every time I test, it differentiates between $43 and $63 every time I test. It depends on, because I was in Florida with my sons um, for a tournament, and I was called to randomly test there. I had to rent a car from Orlando and go all the way to Miami because there was not a test site available in Orlando at the time. So, uh, you know, in addition with the test fees, I had to rent a car. My wife came with me to drive all the way to Miami and take the test. And, and that test, I believe, was $63. I could be wrong. It could be $43. Um, but the testing, um, like, I, like I admitted before, it was, it was very difficult for me to have an observer next to me while I'm uh, urinating for the um, test. So there were times when I took the test during, I tried, I tried to take the test during lunchtime. Um, and we have a long lunchtime here in the office for about an hour and a half. And there were several occasions that I had to call into my CA and let them know that I'm not going to make it back in time because I'm still testing at the test site. Um, and the test site does not allow you to leave. It gives you, I believe, a three hour um, time frame for me to complete the tests once I enter. So I had to complete the test before leaving. 
and I did not want to leave the, the facility without giving a, a test, without giving a specimen. Um, I've had to um, go, you know, around my schedule and book patients around the testing because um, some of the test sites here, the observers are only here in the morning or they start at 10 o'clock. And my business is usually from 9 a.m. till about 4 p.m. So yeah, I've, I've, it's been difficult maneuvering through the whole thing. Thank you. I have one one other question. Um, yes, sir. I, I think it was mentioned that you did 75 AA meetings. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Are you are you are you still attending AA? No, I'm not, sir. No. Okay. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Paris. Appreciate it. Good afternoon. I have a question. Good afternoon, Dr. McLean. How are you? How do you currently celebrate um, special occasions, special events, or momentous occasions? Oh, oh now it's with a, a lot of good food and just a lot of good friends. And I, I and it's with mostly my family. It's with my two boys and my wife. We keep it close, and especially with the pandemic, it's brought us closer as a family. Um, and my boys and I have picked up playing golf or just doing outdoor activities, and that keeps me um, very happy. So I'm focusing on all the good things in my life, which I do have a lot of blessings, so I don't want to um, ever risk that. And um, you mentioned in your petition that one of the main, the second main reason that you wanted this lifted was because of your apprehension due to COVID. As COVID has declined and uh, restrictions are being lifted, what are your feelings there? Do you still feel the same or, and are there any other mitigating circumstances? Um, when it comes to COVID, I was, I, I'm very afraid of, you know, going into a, an area where there's going to be sick people, possibly, you know, more exposure to me, more exposure means I'm going to expose that to my family and to my wife and to my mother, who is, you know, 76 years old. But with everything being lifted, no, I, I'm not concerned about my health um, going into a test site. I'm about um, number one, the embarrassment, like I was saying, it's for me, it's very difficult urinating while someone is watching. And number two, the monetary, um, the, the, the amount of money that it costs is putting my family in, in a very bad hardship because of all the things that are happening in my life with my son going off to college, with me being my, the, the sole um, breadwinner in the, the, the household. So you've stated that this is the only portion of your probationary um, restrictions that you want lifted. So you're still okay with continuing with all of the discipline, all of the other aspects of the disciplinary order, including the monitoring, the reports, et cetera. Yes, doctor. I'm. I. I have no. I, I'm. I'm still going to be a volunteer for uh, my kids' um, sports. I've been. I love doing that. I've been doing that. I mean, since they were five years old, I have no problem doing the report monitoring. I have, I have no problem doing anything else um, that is required by the board. I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from board members? Um, I just have a clarifying question, one or two clarifying questions. You're no longer attending AA, correct? Um, that's correct. No, sir. Are you attending any support groups at all? No, sir. I'm getting most of my support, all of my support from my family. Okay. The 2018 offense, what were you celebrating that caused you? The I was celebrating because oh, I, had, I had fractured two ribs, and so I needed a substitute for me in the office for two weeks. And my friend from college, from chiropractic school, he was able to substitute for me for those two weeks to keep my business running. And so we, I took him out for dinner and we had some wine and we were celebrating him being able to um, sustain my practice.
And as I understand your testimony in 2013, you, you, were, you were not driving erratically, but you just ran into a police checkpoint, is that right? That's correct, sir. And that's when they determined that you were under the influence of alcohol? Yes, sir. I see, okay. Uh, do you have any specific relapse prevention strategies in place right now? It's all through prayer and my family. It's that has helped me stay strong and I'm going to continue to do that. Okay, any further questions from board members? Okay, um, Mr. Cortez, would you like to make a closing statement? I just want to thank you guys and uh, for giving me the opportunity and hearing me out. I understand that it's been a crazy year with the pandemic and I understand that um, I know that you hear a lot of petitions for either I mean I, this is the first time I've, I've listened to um, the first case and I'm just blown away your jobs are difficult and I appreciate the time for hearing me out thank you thank you uh, Mr. Stone would you like to make closing remarks um, again I would like to note for the record that uh, I am here on behalf of the Attorney General's Office uh, for the people of the state of California to provide uh, information and a summary of the discipline uh, for your honor and for the board. Uh, we do not have a, a position or argument on the petitioner's request for a reduction in penalty. So unless there are any questions or comments that I can respond to, um, I would submit it with that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, was there another comment? Oh, I just said thank you, Mr. Stone. You're welcome. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, that concludes the petition hearing in this matter. The case is submitted and the record is closed. But before we go off, again, I want to check with our court reporter and get an estimate of the number of pages and the ending time of this matter. Yes, Your Honor. Ending time 3.03 p.m. Estimate of pages 24. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we are off the record in this matter and we'll be proceeding uh, expeditiously to the next petitioner, but I think uh, everyone probably wants to take a short break at this point. Is that correct? Including the court reporter? <laughs> Is this a good correct, time Lord. to take a short break? Correct, uh, Dr. We could take a what's five your preference? If we could take a five-minute break now, that would be uh, great. Okay, that would be great. I'm going to leave everything intact, so hopefully we don't have to have any problems with someone else coming in. Okay, we'll take a short five-minute break then. Thank you. Okay, are we all here? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Deputy Stone? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, so we're all ready to go. Um, Mr. Hankins? Your Honor, would... Yes, we're ready? Would you like for us to call the roll of the board? Yes. Mr. Rufino, can you call the roll? Yes, I can, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> Dr. McLean? Present. Dr. Perez? Present. Rufino, present. Do uh, Mr. Sweet? Present. Madam Chair, everyone is here. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Judge, this is Robert Puglia, the Executive Officer. I just wanted to ask um, Dr. Hankins if he would mind closing the blinds behind him so that the board members can see his face a little better. Okay, Mr. Hankins, can you do that? Better, thank you. <laughs>
Okay. Um, Okay, Mr. Hankins, can you hear us and see us? Mr. Hankins? Can you not hear me? Uh, okay, I'm looking for you. I, I just heard you, Mr. Hankins. Can you oh, can you sorry. speak again? Can you speak again? Oh, so we can I, I help? see you now. I'm sorry. I, I was looking for you, but I couldn't see you. Okay, I can see you now, and I think I can hear you. And please, okay, so, if you cannot yeah, just, see or hear any of us, let us know. I think I hear all of you. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Um, this is the matter of the petition for reinstatement. And may I take the... Uh, that is of, of Dean Hankins. Uh, may I take the uh, appearance of the Deputy Attorney General? Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is Deputy Attorney General Jeff Stone, uh, uh, appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California. Um, the Office of the Attorney General uh, is not uh, appearing today uh, as a counsel for the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. Uh, but simply on behalf of the people of the state of California to provide the board and uh, with your honor uh, with a summary of the disciplinary uh, matter uh, and uh, to provide any information that may be helpful to uh, your honor or the board. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Stone. Uh, Petitioner Dean Hankins is present and is representing uh, himself. And uh, good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Hankins. Uh, I don't know how much of these matters you may have set through previously uh, today, but I just want to give you just a thumbnail sketch of this. Uh, in this proceeding, the board is concerned with hearing about any rehabilitation since your license was disciplined. The Deputy Attorney General will first present a petition package and provide background in this matter. After that, you will have an opportunity to make your presentation. Uh, this is a reminder that the board has had the benefit of reading the petition package and you do not have to repeat anything in that package. You will be subject to questioning by both the board members and the Deputy Attorney General. After the hearing, the board will go into closed session to deliberate. You will not receive a decision today. It will be mailed in the near future. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, I do not. Okay, is Dr. McLean still there? I don't see her. I'm here, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. For some reason, you're not showing on my screen. Okay. Well, you're th as long as you're there, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Okay, great. Um, at this point, I would uh, turn this over to the uh, Deputy Attorney General, uh, Deputy Stone, for a presentation of the petition package and a brief summary and background of this case. Please proceed, Mr. Stone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, petition to reinstate a revoked license by uh, Dean Hankins. Uh, he was uh, issued license DC 21347, uh, January 1st of 1991, uh, and it was revoked effective March 24th, uh, 2017. Along with that, there was an award of board costs in the amount of $3,627.50, which are unpaid as of this time. Um, it does appear that he, that uh, petitioner has provided continuing education satisfactory for 2017 uh, through 2020, uh, but not any uh, training submitted uh, for the 2021 renewal cycle. We can find the petition and supporting documents at what's been labeled BCE 000001 through 20. 
uh, the petition. Excuse me, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Stone, your, Mr. Stone, you cut out and I couldn't hear you um, for- the continuing, continuing education documents can be found at pages 16 through 23. The uh, violation leading to the relocation uh, consists of practicing outside the scope of chiropractic, uh, failure to file current address, false advertising, improper- Mr. Stone, can I premises. stop you for just a minute? Yes, you can. Uh, court reporter, did you? Are you getting it now? Yes, Your Honor, I, I am. I, he did cut out for a little bit. Um, he when he was saying we find the petition and supporting document what's been labeled BCE 001 through, and then he cut out for a little bit. Okay. Uh, the, there, Mr. Stone. Yes. Okay. Please proceed. Yes, the petition and supporting documents are at pages 1 through 23. The petition and addendums A, B, and C are at pages 1 through 15. And there's continuing education documentation at pages 16 through 23. Moving on to the violations leading to the relocation, we have practicing outside scope of chiropractic, failing to file current address, false advertising, improper conduct on premises, endangering the health, welfare, or safety of the public, and dispensing controlled substance, specifically <clears throat> marijuana. The uh, decision and order, the proposed decision, and the accusation can be found at pages 20 through, 24 through 42. And the specifics uh, of the accusation uh, are that uh, in January of 2014, uh, petitioner placed an advertisement in a local Orange County week weekly publication offering to pl uh, supply first-time patients of the Cairo the Cairo Clinic, his business, with a free joint, a common euphemism for a marijuana cigarette. Uh, and the advertisement all also listed the sale price for marijuana uh, and stated that they accept cash credit and possible insurance billing for chiropractic, chiropractic uh, care, chiropractic care, excuse me. Uh, this, the advertisement uh, specifically read, quote, the Cairo Clinic, first time patients, $45 top shelf, one eighth and free joint, free gifts, cash credit, possible insurance billing for chiropractic care, uh, end quote. Uh, at the um, initial uh, hearing, the uh, uh, respondent, uh, I believe, did not testify in relation uh, specifically uh, to the matter, uh, but in his uh, statements to the uh, board investigator, um, he did uh, acknowledge that uh, he, uh, that the Cairo Clinic uh, was his clinic and that uh, he was in business uh, at the time uh, with uh, a, um, a dispensary um, and conducted business uh, in relation um, to those two uh, joint businesses. And um, that is a summary of uh, the proceedings and the finding uh, uh, of the board to uh, revoke petitioner's license. That concludes Thank you, the summary. Mr. Stone. Petition. Um, Thank you. Mr. Hankins, this is uh, now the time for uh, your testimony. Before you uh, testify, however, I'd like to swear you in as a witness. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that your testimony in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, yes. Thank you. And preliminarily, Mr. Stone, I just want to uh, give you a little preamble that we usually give to the uh, petitioners. And that is, I want to stress that this is your opportunity to present your case. You may testify on your own behalf. You are reminded that the board has had the benefit of your petition package. So there is no need to repeat anything in that package. Do you have any additional documents you would like to present? 
I do have the 2021 um, continuing education units. I was told um, since my packet was turned in in June of 2020 that it wasn't necessary that I uh, uh, supply those, but I do have them, and I can I can send them over when anybody wants them. Okay, I don't I think it would be necessary. If, yeah, yeah, but yeah, what I was told is that I could actually uh, pay the fines and turn in the units after my, uh, hopefully, if my license was uh, uh, reinstated. That's what was advised uh, of me. Okay. Do you have any additional, do you have any witnesses that you'd like to call? No, I don't, I don't have any witnesses. I have a, a little, uh, I have some uh, 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 page I'd like to read. Um, I wrote it out. Sometimes I go off uh, off track. So um, I just like to read a little okay. statement. And then at the end of the statement, I'd be more than willing to ask or answer any questions that anybody has. And about how long is the statement? Oh, uh, one page. Is this something you, you, you prepared? You it's prepared this? Pre yeah, I prepared it. You, and yeah, you, when, I, when you hear it, sir, um, you'll know it's not from an attorney or a judge. Okay, please proceed. Yeah, um, I would like to thank everybody, the judge and the board members who are participating today. Um, it is really with my best intention to keep this presentation short. Um, time is truly our only valuable commodity, and I don't want to incur any more my time onto yours. Um, I'm not the same man today as who I was in 2014, 2015. Um, I don't want to go into details with that, but if the judge or the members want to inquire afterwards, I'd be willing to answer any questions that they have. The actions with my chiropractic clinic during this time was not a wise choice. It caused a stain and or a black eye on the chiropractic profession. I realize this now, and for this, I do sincerely apologize to the profession, to the board members, and all other chiropractors who I may have harmed. It certainly was not my intention. Rehab is a true part of any reintegration into a career, to a life, to a relationship. Realizing this, I spent many hours, days and nights searching and wondering, what am I going to do to show the board that I am making some kind of rehabilitation efforts? The problem is, is when you search the internet, there is no uh, clinic, no rehab center for unwise decisions. To my detriment, I couldn't find any. Treatment centers for every other malady popped up left and right but still nothing on the internet for treatment of making those poor decisions. I felt a little bit of frustration growing, knowing how am I going to let the board know I had to achieve some sense of rehabilitation. The answer I thought was maybe I can just show them a little bit of me through some personal self-reflection and the words that I choose to collect. And some of those words that I choose to collect, I presented to you in my packet. And to this day, I still collect words. All of these words come from books, articles, TVs, commercials, interviews, from any form of media. If I read something, if I hear something that makes my gray matter go, hmm, that was really interesting, I stop, I write it down, or I rewind the TV to listen, and I write it down. And I believe those six pages that I gave to you guys in my packet present a pretty good picture of who I am, what maybe inspires me, and to some degree, what really makes me tick. It certainly is a different reflection of a person than what is presented in the matter of the accusations against me. And a reminder, there were no criminal charges, federal, state, county, or city. There were no criminal charges of, what, of, of, of any kind. If you guys read this packet, I hope you maybe found something interesting in the words that I have, have presented. It did change something in me, and maybe it changed something in you. Um, as stated earlier in the packet, you will find all of my continued education hours. And as I had stated earlier also, I do have the 2021 hours. You also found a list of several dy uh, dynamic chiropractic articles that I uh, stay in touch with. I get dynamic chiropractic emailed to me um, monthly. I like the scientific articles, but the one that I really like a little bit better, and you're, maybe you're all familiar, but maybe the judge is not familiar with it, but it's another, another media event called chirocom.com. 
it's uh, has a, a lot more philosophy, uh, chiropractic, BJ, Palmer, DD Palmer, and their layout it tracks me a little bit more because it, it's words. It's something that we can use. And like I said earlier, um, there were no charges against me, the government, the Fed, the state, county, or local. But it's not those actions that we're here really to worry about. Was I charged or not charged? I think what really matters is, does the board really feel that I won't ever do this again? And how well I re represent the profession of chiropractic. Um, to be honest, when I made those decisions back in 2014 and 2015, I let everyone down. I let myself down. I let my family down. I let the profession down. And I'm sorry for those actions. I, I, I really am. There's nothing I can do about it. I did it. I served the punishment. I'm trying to be a better person. And I am a better person. And um, all I can ask right now is for the forgiveness from the board, a second chance from the board to maybe be the light of the profession. Um, and uh, to tell you that if you do reinstate my license, I'm not going to let you down. I, I, I truly won't. Um, it was a big learning episode for me and my family. So um, at this point, um, I'm open to uh, answer any questions and uh, move forward from there. Thank you. Okay, you covered everything you want to say in terms of rehabilitation, right? At this okay, point. So. Okay, uh, we'll turn it over at this point to the Deputy Attorney General for questioning. Deputy Stone. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, since the, your license was revoked in March of 2017, um, what have you done uh, for income since that time? Um, for income at that time, um, the roles between myself and my wife um, were reversed. In the 90s, um, I made all the money. She stayed home with the kids. Um, I was very fortunate, and my wife is very fortunate, that when our kids got into high school and into college, that um, she pretty much is the sole breadwinner. Um, she, she runs a, uh, how do I want to say this, a, a, a multi, multi-billion dollar uh, a year company. And um, I'm, I'm blessed to the fact that I'm married to a wonderful woman who uh, not only can support herself, but she supports me and all of our kids. Uh, so you haven't done, any, uh, done anything for income since that time? Well, uh, I, I, I guess what, what do you want to call like any type of income? Um, I do, uh, I do coach football. Um, I look at it as more as a, um, uh, giving back to the community. I played division one football, uh, football myself in college. And um, it's, it's, it's great to work with the kids to see what the young kids today are doing. But when your stipend is uh, 1500 bucks for uh, five months of work, seven days a week, uh, pretty much six to seven hours a day, I, I wouldn't call that an income. So um, yeah, did I get a W-2 on it? I did. But for myself as, as, as an income, um, I, I pretty much am a stay-at-home father right now. And um, if I have the opportunity to get my uh, chiropractic license back, I would like to go back into that and specifically just do uh, uh, DOT uh, exam certifications. Uh, since um, the findings of the, uh, uh, of the proposed decision and the adoption of, the, of that proposed decision by the board, um, effective in March of 2017. Have you had any other involvement in the cannabis business or cannabis industry? Oh, no, none whatsoever. No need now, right? It's, it's uh, unfortunately went recreational use. It's no longer only medicinal use. Um, it's it's going to be controlled by five or six huge players, and that's it. And that's basically what's happened to the state. You can look at Colorado, too. Uh, they, they don't get the taxes that they were, basically the public was lied to. 
it was a big charade just to get it to a recreational use. And now there's stay away from it with a 10 foot pole. I believe you've explained to us the purpose of your addendum A, which is your quotes and, and references that, that uh, sort of represent something about you. Uh, your addendum B uh, mentions that you're, you're unsure of um, uh, a chiropractic, a license to practice chiropractic. Um, was, uh, you didn't know whether it was a professional license uh, uh, or not. Um, have you, um, since your submission of the petition, come to uh, any um, uh, opinion or reflected all, uh, at all or researched at all uh, whether well, that I, uh, license is a professional license? Well, um, I, I, I still don't know. Um, when, when you look at the application, it says it's application for a health healing arts license. So um, I, I know there's, it's ambiguous. But it's it's not. I, I I don't believe the board of chiropractors, um, or chiropractor themselves would would want to uh, assume that their license is the same as a professional hairstylist license. So I I don't know. It's it's a it's a great question to raise. But well, have you a medical, in, a medical you... doctor is a, a medical doctor a, a professional license? Is your license a professional license? You have a law license. I think a medical doctor has a medical license. So. I, I just don't know. And again, I reached out to attorneys and asked about this, and they said, well, that would be an okay answer. If you're unclear, then state that you're unclear about it. So um, that's, that's what I did. I just was trying to be clear and honest about my have answer you, here. That's all I was doing. Have you contacted the board or done any research to find out the parameters or, or the professional uh, aspect of the license? Well, somewhere, and I, I, I didn't know I was going to be asked about this, but somewhere in a packet that I have, uh, when it, it shows on the application that you're applying for a healing arts license. So whether now a chiropractic license, and, 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 I, and I grant you, Mr. Stone, that there's been a lot of changes. Now I think the chiropractic profession is part of the California uh, Consumer Protection whatever that is. Maybe that's changed. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it has. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it wouldn't change my answer, right? I, I guess that's what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that you're, you're asking, um, have I ever had disciplinary action taken against a professional license in this state or any other? And it's no, right? Well, unless I'm just asking you guys are unless yeah unless you consider a chiropractic license a professional license, then I would say then the answer is going to be yes. I, I don't I don't know how that's relevant. Well, what I'm asking is you if you've done anything to research or educate yourself on uh, the nature or parameters of uh, licensure um, uh, to. Uh, to uh, practice in the chiropractic field, to, to, to educate yourself or learn for yourself uh, what those standards are. Well, like as I guess I stated earlier, when I was filling out this application, I, uh, or this, the packet, I did find online the application, the state, the state of California's application for all online, and it, nowhere on it does it say an application for a professional license. It says healing arts license. I, I did research that and found that, and I don't have it with me, but I can I can find it, and 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 supply it, if you want. But um, I just wanted to know what you've done to uh, evaluate, educate, or research uh, um, that issue. Um, moving on to Addendum C, uh, I wasn't sure what that was. What, what what is Addendum C? It appears to be a receipt. What 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 are you submitting the that receipt? What is the purpose of that? Yeah, addendum C was just that I went down and I, 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 I took my uh, picture um, at the local at the local postal annex for um, basically what is a a, a a passport photo. That that's all I was doing. Now, in your um, petition, I'm looking specifically at uh, what you'll find is is page four. 
um, of the documents uh, that have been submitted. On page four, there's a question. Uh, about uh, specifically explain fully why you feel your license should be reinstated. And within your answer, you mentioned uh, uh, the lesson that you learned. And you said, the lesson learned here is the board has the ultimate authority over the practice of chiropractic in every aspect. Uh, is that the lesson that you feel you've learned oh, here? I, absolutely they do. It's, it's, it's no different than um... You know, if you, you use a sports analogy, right? The, the the ultimate guardians of the sports are is are, are the referees who or or who uh, who who owns it, right? But the board of chiropractic owns the profession, and I get it, and, and I and I didn't I didn't maybe understand the complete power that they had up until this uh, this this instance. So they they do they they can they can take your license away for 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 you know. The minorest of things, like as as stated, there was no criminal proceedings, and the board took the license away. That is power, in and of itself, power. The two gentlemen that were preceding me, they both had criminal convictions of various degrees. I was online watching a lot of these these uh, episodes before to prepare myself for this. Everybody had a criminal uh, grievance of some sort, and and that's what's a little difficult. And I've reached out to other chiropractors who work with other chiropractors for a living to get them to rehab. And he goes, you know what, Dean, you're just you're in a, you're in a weird position. You'd be better off if you were a drunk. You'd be better off if you were a drug user. You were better off if you were convicted of a crime because then at least you could go through the steps A through Z and then show the board that you did it, and they would be happy with that. that that's, that's, not, that's not what happened here, right? So I'm, I'm almost in a worse position than somebody that, you know, drank, drive, and egregiously hurt somebody. What? Do you feel that the, the conduct that led to your discipline, to your revocation, um, your mixing your business, your cannabis business with uh, your chiropractic business, um, do you believe that to be uh, minor? Uh, no, I don't. I don't believe it to be minor. That was probably the uh, root, of, root of all the problems here. It, it, it was mixed, right? And... Um, you know, uh, it, uh, it, it, it shouldn't have been done. I, I should have made a wiser choice and not, not done that. Okay. Well, you had mentioned that the, uh, the lesson that you learned was uh, the uh, power and authority of the board. Did you uh, learn any lessons regarding your own business practices? As far as chiropractic or, or, or which, which part of it? Well, you're, you're the one that mixed them. So I'm just asking if your business practices, if you learned any lessons regarding your business practices in whatever business you conduct. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I, I guess the ultimate lesson learned here is that uh, you only practice chiropractic at 100 East Main Street and you don't do anything else at 100 East Main Street other than chiropractic. That's, that's the ultimate lesson. That's, that's what I learned in a hard way, what the power of the board has to, to discipline its active licensed chiropractors is that statement. You only do what you wanna do as far as the chiropractic profession at the physical location that you have with the city, and then you have a business license to run your chiropractic office at that location, and you don't do anything else. You don't you don't wash clothes, or yeah, I, I'm using that metaphorically, but you don't you don't have anything else at your office except a chiropractic office. Um, 
are you making a distinction between business conducted out of your chiropractic office and business you conduct elsewhere? I'm, uh, can you elaborate on that question? Well, I'm just, you, you, were, you were specifically uh, referencing chiropractic business at your chiropractic um, address. Um, but, uh, and I was wondering if what you were doing was saying that you, that you would only do chiropractic uh, business at that address um, and, and other business elsewhere was the point you were making. Uh, and I'm just trying to flush out what you mean. By no, that. that's that's not that's not what the, uh, that's not what the point I was making. I'm I'm sure if I owned a manufacturing company, you wouldn't want me to have a chiropractic practice at my manufacturing company address. If I want to practice chiropractic, I need to have it at a location that's conducive for a chiropractic practice. And any other business medium, whatever it may be, needs to be done at a different location. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that make the most sense? So going back to uh, your response to uh, question two on page four, you, you mentioned that you passed the FMCSA DOT examiner's licensing exam. That's the Federal Motor Car Carrier Safety Administration. Is that right? Correct. And that's Correct. through the Department of Transportation? Correct. Can you tell me what that, uh, what that exam is and what being that type of examiner is? You mean the examination, the test examination that I took to get that licensing or the, the, what, what I do, what, what you would do when a DOT licensed individual came into your office to get an exam? Well, let, let, let's let's start with that. What what is a uh, what what does a FMCSA DOT examiner do? He examines a individual that is licensed by their state as a commercial vehicle truck driver, and you examine them to make sure that they're healthy enough to um, drive a truck. That's a federally licensed commercial vehicle. Did you take classes to prepare oh, yes. yourself for that yes. exam? Yes. And and what types of things do you learn in those classes? Uh, well, we, we learned uh, lots of things. We learned um, the learned. <laughs> I'm sorry, it kind of caught me off, off guard on, on that stuff. But as far as uh, the exam itself or what we learned in there, um, we want to check eyes. We got to run a, a, a diabetes test. Need to make sure if the gentleman can bend over and touch his toes and tie his shoes because if, if they can't climb up and out of the truck, they can't be a truck driver. If they can't tie down their load, they can't um, uh, be a truck driver. Make sure, ask them what kind of medications they're on. If they're on a list of medications and there's adverse reactions to the medications, you have to make sure that we're giving them uh, a, a awareness that they need to make sure with their medical doctor who prescribed them the medications that they can uh, take these, but um, they can still drive. So I, 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 hope, I hope that helps. It's, uh... Did you... Um... Are, are you licensed or certified by uh, any uh, agency or entity uh, in regard to being an FMCSA DOT examiner? Well, uh, I have a, a, a federal DOT examiner's license, but that license is no good unless you have a active medical osteopathic, RN, PA, or uh, naturopathic uh, license behind it. I can, I can give so, you my number if you'd like. So your, uh, uh, your uh, license, I guess, if you will, uh, as an FMCSA DOT examiner is contingent on you um, being reinstated as a chiropractor? 
That's correct. Yeah. The, the day that you guys took my license away, that's the day I, I could not do chiropractic anymore and I couldn't do DOT physicals anymore. They go hand in hand. And so your goal is to um, combine your um, FMCSA examinations that you, you would be doing uh, along with a chiropractic adjusting practice? Whether I do chiropractic adjustments or not, I haven't come to that. Uh, that uh, uh, I haven't decided if I want that. If I do do that, it's going to be strictly a cash-based practice and um, very limited. At my age and with the injuries that I have from playing Division One football, a lot of mornings I can't even get up. So the idea that... Um, I need to adjust people, and I think every doctor on the board can agree our job is a kinetic job. We move things as a chiropractor if you're being an adjusting chiropractor on a day-to-day -day basis, and it, it could be painful. So whether I'm going to do that or not, I don't know. But what I'd like to do is have my license reinstated so I can do the DOT. Okay, I, I, I ask. I ask because you state, uh, quote, if my license to practice chiropractic is reinstated, my goal is to open an office to perform FMCSA exams and a traditional old school all cash chiropractic adjusting practice, end quote. Is that still your goal to uh, combine those businesses? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it would, it, it is. If it's just a straight ad ad adjusting, mainly neck, maybe some upper back. I can't do low back anymore because of, of my physical ailments, right? But if it's upper back, a little soft tissue, somebody comes in, adjust them. Some of our chiropractors will preach the eight like this. It's a hole in one technique. They understand what that is. You know, if, if it's that kind of an adjusting technique, that's fine. But I, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be in a, uh, certainly, don't want to be in a practice where I have to deal with uh, modern insurance billing and things of that nature. So that's what you mean by cash is not through insurance? Correct. I don't have any other questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Do board members have any questions? I have nothing. Okay, no. No questions. Board member questions at all, it appears. Um, just a, a clarifying question on if, if any questions occur to board members, uh, please let us know. This FMCSA is, what does that stand for? Federal? Federal Motor Carriers. Um, FMCA. Uh, yeah, I'm not really good this, mnemonics. Excuse me, this yes. is Jeff Stone. Um, I believe that that uh, that it stands for Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, uh, which relates Carrier. to your operation. Okay, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Right, it relates to commercial uh, motor vehicles, and it's through the Department of Transportation. Okay, you mentioned that your wife runs a multi-million dollar a year company. What company is that? No, that's it's not not not. Let's change that M to a B billion. She runs a company called American Financial Network. It's a mortgage company with about fifty branches across the nation, about forty-five hundred employees. Look her up, Twyla T W Y L A last name Hankins. H A N K I N. What kind of company is that again? What kind of company mortgage, is that again? Pardon? Mortgage, mortgage company. Okay, getting back to your, you, okay, since your 
Since 2017, you have coached football. At what level is this football that you've coached? Uh, high school varsity. High school varsity? Mm-hmm. Or any specific high schools? Uh, Servite University High School in Irvine, uh, Lakewood High School in Long Beach, or in Lake, yeah, Lakewood High School in Lakewood and Wilson High School in Long Beach. I just bounce around with the same head coach. So you've coached in Irvine, Long Beach, and Lakewood. Well, the first one was Servite in Anaheim. The second school was University High School in Irvine. The third one was Lakewood High School in Lakewood. And currently, we're at Long Beach Wilson High School in Long Beach. Okay, and as I understand it, those are the your only. That's your only source of personal income that you generated since 2017. <laughs> your Honor, it is, and if you want to consider that an income, like I said, uh, it's it's a dedication of uh, heart and passion for the sport and to work with the kids. Um, Servite's a private high school. University uh, High School down in Irvine, um, smartest kids we ever coached. We had three kids on our football team that uh, had perfect SAT, ACT tests, and one of them was uh, uh, smart enough that he got himself a full academic scholarship to Princeton. So it's fun to work with the future of what America is, and there's still a lot of good kids out there. Okay, just a couple more questions, and I'll be I'll be finished yes. here. Um, yes. Addendum A that you that you've attached, would it be correct to say that in some respect that maybe illuminates your philosophy of life? If you want to say that, Your Honor, yes, it it it, it truly does. Okay, and that's that's kind of what you wanted to bring out. What your I'm, life philosophy I'm not the- is. Correct. I, I don't, I, you know what, um, like I said, the, the statement that I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit different of a person than I was in 2014, 15. And um, I'm, I'm sure if I was a little nicer, I'm sure if I was a little more workable with the gals that were the um, investigators with this initially, I probably would have been in a different situation. But um, at that time, I was a little angry at a lot of things in life. And uh, sometimes I'm not helpful. And I know I wasn't real helpful with them. But it's not my job to do their job, if if that's an understanding. Um, But it didn't make it pleasant for them. And I I feel that... um, You know, things were a little exaggerated in the reports that um, I read about myself. And um, so I I just wanted to maybe portray a different side of who who I am. Okay, and the last question is addendum C, the the receipt for passport photo. Yeah. Uh, Did you, were you just, did you just want the board to know that you'd had a passport photo taken? Why did you include that? Uh, I, I, I guess so. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that they could see that I'm following the rules, right? I, I, I am. That, that's all I was doing. It's the same thing with the with the other one, the uh, the addendum B. It's it's basically, you know, I'm following the rules. I want to make sure I'm answering the stuff correctly and doing the stuff the right way. So that's why I put these other little tidbits in there. That's just my personality. Uh, and um, it uh, uh, that that's that's what it is. They asked for a photo. I just put in the passport photo, and I put the receipt in, included it, just as a means that hey, here's the photo. It was taken of me, and uh, that's why it's there. Okay, thank you. I, I don't know if I've generated any more questions. Any board members have questions? Um, yeah, you want to? I got one quick. Uh, question, uh, clarification question, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Hankins, uh, regarding the uh, enforcement cost. And I just wanted to 
make sure that I heard correctly, and you, of course, have the opportunity to straight the record there you know, too. Um, I believe you said that you were told to pay the enforcement cost uh, three thousand six hundred twenty-seven fifty after the hearing. I, I think you said something to that effect uh, earlier in your yeah. testimony. Yeah, um, I, I, I I will. Okay, so my question so, to you is finish, just yeah. my question to you is just for clarify uh, for clarification purpose. Are you implying that you will pay if your license get reinstated, or is or you or you're saying that you're going to pay after the hearing, regardless of the outcome? No, 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 not not at all, not at all. I was wanting to pay it, um, and and what I had mentioned earlier is that I did reach out to another chiropractic physician doctor who helps rehab other chiropractors. I asked him for his advice and I, I told him everything that I had to do about the fine, this, that, and the other. And he said, don't worry about it. Just pay it at the, at, at the end. I was wanting to pay it when I did the application. And he says, well, don't do that. Just pay it because it's 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 a tit for tat type of a thing here. If I'm paying you and I'm at the same time I'm I'm per turning in my application, then you could almost say, "Hey, well I'm I'm trying to uh convince you to go ahead and it it's 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 almost like I'm 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 paying you to reinstate the license." Does that does that make sense? So that that's why he advised me not to pay anything, just to pay it in thousand dollars here, thousand dollars there, thousand dollars, and then pay it at 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 the end. If if you'd like, okay, so I can then, send you a check tomorrow. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Say that again. No, so no, no. I said thank you for clarifying that because he was implied that some staff person at the board may have said to you or may not to pay it. So it was another chiropractor. Oh. But did you ask? Did you ask any staff person at the board what would be, you know, because this has got nothing to do with a license. This has got to do with enforcement costs. This is the cost that the board and taxpayers had to pay in order to investigate the, your case. Correct, and I and I understand that, and I'm willing to make that restitution. And it, it wasn't anybody on your staff that I talked that that told me to do this. It was another chiropractor who professionally does this, and he said, "Don't wait about the fines or fees." And, and maybe he gave me bad information. Maybe I wasn't didn't clarify that it wasn't a fine; it was restitution for taxpayer money. And maybe if he knew that, he would have given me different information. But the, the money's irrelevant. That, I got it. No, thank you. I just yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. I just uh, thank you for clarifying it. Oh, okay, thank you. No okay. more questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Nothing further, um, Mr. Hankins. Uh, do you want to make a closing remarks? I have a I have a question, Judge Bennett, if I if I may. Well, you can't ask me questions. I mean, I'm we're asking you questions. I mean, unless it's some kind of procedural question. Uh, this, what is is your Dr. question? this is Dr. Paris. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I thought it was. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Dr. Paris. Please. Uh, thank you. I have, uh, Mr. Hankins, I have two quick questions. Um, one, on the references of the continuing education you've done in the last year, are any of those from peer-reviewed journals? Are any of those from scientific journals? I know it has the titles, but I the, the full reference isn't listed. Say that again now. Um, I didn't understand. I didn't hear all of your question. Um, number six on the petition form asks you to list all chiropractic literature you have studied during the last year. And the titles and the dates um, are listed, um, but I, w where the articles actually came from is not. And so my question is, are any of those from peer-reviewed or scientific journals? I, I can look them up for you. If you'd like me to do some homework and send that to you, I can. Um, but I can tell you that all of them were out of dynamic chiropractic. 
Okay. Some of the articles that they have in there are peer reviewed, other ones aren't. So I, I can't ascertain right now which ones were or weren't, but I believe there probably was some that are, and I can get you that answer if you'd like. No, no need to do anything. You've answered the question that they were out of dynamic chiropractic. That answers my question. Okay. And right, my second you. question is, I'm wondering if, uh, if since the revocation or even maybe prior, but since the revocation in 2017, have you revisited or read our rules and regulations? I, I have, um, and there were some changes, and then I, I get updates from um, other chiropractic things that they, hey, there's a change here, there's a change here, but I, 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 I can tell you I have read them, um, only for my own uh, education, but I, I don't know if I could answer a specific question about them for you, but I have, I've, I did read them. I, I'm, I'm only I'm only bringing it up because there was uh, a lot of discussion in this hearing in regards to uh, professional license, et cetera. And I just wanted to to note that in our rules and regulations, the the term I think I think that might guide you as to um, understanding the type of license and uh, the, the word professional and unprofessional conduct, et cetera. Is, between those two, I think they're mentioned close to 40 times in there. Um, and then the other thing was too, I noticed that with um, there was there was some uh, note about um, that you that the people who uh, reported the advertisement were unknown to you. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah, I, and, I have no. And so I, I just no wanted. And it seemed that seemed to cause some uh, a little bit of concern or angst, at least w with our investigator during the initial investigation. And and so I only wanted to point out that um, we have a regulation that, and I and I will read this. It's uh, 314 law violators, and it reads: It shall be the duty of every licensee to notify the executive officer or his or her designee of any violation of the act or of these rules and regulations in order that the board may take appropriate disciplinary action. So I just wanted to make sure that um, you were aware that, that that is the responsibility of every licensed DC. I, Whether no, you know I, I understand that. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no I, I, I understand that. Thank you. I have no further question. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, I have one, uh, maybe one or two questions here. Um, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Hank Mr. Hankins. Um, I, I was just asking, I wanted to find out, you mentioned previously that you made some bad decisions and there was no official rehabilitative process for bad decisions. I mean, is there any, um, um, and I think you mentioned there were, uh, you were in a different situation or a different uh, frame of mind back a few years ago. Can you describe for us uh, a little bit about what's changed or what assurances you can provide the board that um, there won't be bad decisions in the future? Um, yeah, uh, um, I, my, uh, the bad decision, um, probably the egregious decision was probably my, um, tone when I met with your investigators. And um, I apologize for that, right? And I apologize for having two enterprises out of one chiropractic office. But um, yes, things, things are changed in my life. Um, my, uh, uh, my relationship my, with my wife is better. Um, my son is now out of high school and graduated from University of San Diego last year. Um, his dreams that I was trying to help facilitate with him in playing major college football, even though he played at the University of San Diego, which is still a good school. It's not SDSU, it's University of San Diego, the private school. Um, and there was 
just a lot of frustration uh, in, in my life that uh, I knew the course that if he wanted to do certain things, he, we needed to go this direction. And a roadblock after roadblock after roadblock were set up, not only by family members, but um, other coaches, other administrators at his high school, things of that nature. We, 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 I didn't get any assistance to help facilitate what I was hoping to get for my child. And um, it, it, it just didn't sit real well with me because it was, it was almost – um, it was a reverse discrimination type of a thing for him, for my son. And I don't want to go into that, but, um, as a parent, when you see that applied to your child, it, it, it can make you a, a little bitter, a little uncomfortable with things. And unfortunately, I allowed that to supersede or umbrella a lot of other things in my life. And um, I, I really think if, um, if I would have handled myself better with the investigators um, and sat down and, and, and maybe explained some things and talked some things out a little bit more wisely, um, things probably wouldn't have been as bad for me as they were. Maybe, maybe the state and the board would have taken a different approach. Uh, I'm just saying that for my end. I don't know if, if the state or the board would have. I'm just saying that if, if I would have handled it differently, I think the whole thing would have been different. Thank you. Any further questions? No. Okay, Mr. Hankins, do you wish to make a closing statement? I, I, I don't, I, I don't. I, I think the board, um, you know, well, hopefully uh, they can see through some of this, uh, some of these past things that I've done and uh, uh, allow me to move forward with uh, reinstating my license. Uh, and, and, and I hope they do. And um, we can just leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Stone, do you wish to make a close, closing statement? Uh, uh, no, thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, again, uh, the Office of the Attorney General is here to provide uh, information and uh, act as a resource um, uh, for the board uh, and for Your Honor uh, in order to come up with your, uh, with your decision in this regard. And the office uh, does not have a, a position one way or another on whether reinstatement uh, should or should not be granted. Okay, thank you, counsel. Um, Thank you. That concludes the petition hearing in this matter. The case is submitted and the record is closed. Before we go off the record completely, I want to check with the court reporter and get an estimate of the number of pages and the approximate closing time. Yes, Your Honor, just one moment. Pages, number of pages, 36. I'm sorry, 56? No, five, thir six? Three, six. Three. Oh, three, six. Yes. And closing time, 414. Okay, thank you very much. And a, as I indicated before, a request form shall be made available to the parties in due course, should either of the parties request a hearing transcript. So on this particular matter, uh, we are off the record and the board will be deliberating in closed session. Thank you very much. And I will see you shortly. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, board members. Thank you. Your, Your Honor, if we can go on a five minute break um, and prepare to go into closed session, that would be um, helpful. That would be great. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll see you in five minutes.